Welcome back. In this step, we're going to make the cliffs in our little valley look particularly sexy. So let's get straight into it. OK, I'm just going to come out of landscape mode for now, back into selection mode and then open my content drawer and we need to go back into fab. So let's open fab up. Oh, I'm so relieved it's still working. And I'm going to search for quarry again and make sure the price is filtered to include the free stuff. OK, it's these cliffs we want, and I would recommend getting all of them. So I will just show you with the first one what we need to do, and then we'll just download the rest. I'll time lapse that because we don't want to be here all day. So here's the first one, Quarry Cliff. Make sure that you download these in at least medium quality. I've checked and low quality is not good enough for this, so we need medium quality for this. I probably wouldn't recommend going much higher than medium either because they'll take up a lot of texture space and so it'll not be good. Right, so let's add that to project and you will see that that gets added to the project and it gives you a material, it gives you the textures and it gives you the static mesh as well. If I just click on save all, that should update the preview so you can see everything as well. Yours might update automatically, mine didn't want to. Okay, there's the first cliff. I'll then go back and we'll get which other ones do I want. I'm just going to get them all. So add to project. Okay, that's two. Let's get this third one. Nice. Uh, we'll get this fourth one. We'll get this bit here. This bit's probably one of the most important because it's quite flexible with it being quite thin. It'll fill in a lot of gaps for us. So we need to make sure that one's included. Perfect. And then this one here. And the reason that I'm using all the ones from the quarry search is they're part of a set. So they should all match up together quite nicely. And I'm just going to get this last one here. Add to project. OK, now we've got them all. So I'm just going to close fab for now. I can close my landscape blend material as well. I'm done with that. And then I'm just going to start by building this area here, which is where the crashed spaceship is going to be. And this is the bit that I need to get right. So let's go back up to the content level. There's a fab folder, mega scans, and we've now got 3D and surfaces. Surfaces are where we put the textures from last time. 3D is where all our cliffs are. And here they all are. They've not got particularly helpful names, but you can go in and see the preview of each one. So we've got that bit there, for instance. So I'm going to bring this one in. You can see the size there is quite small. But what I'm going to do is rotate it this way. I'm going to scale it up. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to scale it in on this. And that's just going to stop it from sort of protruding out too far. And then I'm just going to get it in place as closely as I can. So I want to just get this lined up with everything else. It doesn't need to be perfect but it does need to be fairly close. So let's just scale this up so that we get the height as well. That looks okay. I'll try pushing it back a little bit more. We'll go for that. And maybe I'm just gonna push this one over into the corner. In fact, what I'm gonna do is put that one there so that it's just coming out and I'm gonna put a smaller one in front of it here so that I'm not losing too much detail. So I'm gonna get the same one Make a smaller copy of it. Probably just change the angle of it slightly. And place that one about there. Now that has created a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to make it a bit taller. Like that. And hopefully you can see how this is going to come together. I don't mind too much about this here. That will either blend in or I can put a rock or something there later. But for now let's find another cliff. So I'm going to go back here and let's see what this second cliff looks like. That one's too long for this area, so let's try the third one. That looks like it's going to be helpful. This one's much bigger, so I'm going to rotate it around. I'm just going to scale it down a little first so that I can see what I'm working with. And I can see that it is kind of only going to work on one side. So here's what I'll do for this one. I'm going to take it past centre when I scale it. And then I'm going to bring it in about here, put it right in the corner there, and then scale it up a bit. Oh. You can see here, 
the scaling, the snapping on it's not right. I can't get it. So I'm going to turn the snapping off just by clicking on this blue icon here. And then I can scale that more freely. And then I just need to place this somewhere. So there looks pretty good. And I'm going to get a copy of this. So just like we did in the earlier chapter, I'm going to hold Alt and click. And then get this one so it's much smaller. And I'm going to take some height off it as well. And I want to just fill this gap here. Just check that it doesn't look peculiar. I think that looks good. And then I'm going to press play and see how this looks to the player. Okay, and you can see that that now looks much better. There will be an issue with the collisions. We'll fix that later. But as long as it looks nice, that's all we're going for here. So what I'm going to do now is finish off um, just the area around the, the crash site using different cliffs and show you what that looks like. And then I'm going to ask you to do the rest of the, the valley. And I'll time lapse that for you so you can see how I go about it. Okay, so I realized that was sped up. It probably took me between five and 10 minutes to put this together. And you can see that some parts are left a little bit rough around the edges where the cliffs don't quite meet up with the landscape. I've left that on purpose. We are gonna sort those out later. So don't worry about them too much. Get it relatively close. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that's the process. Just keep getting the cliffs, overlap them, put them in uh, different arrangements, have different sizes, have them at different heights if you need to. Just make sure that you are putting them in a way that looks good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a cut and you will see me in about half an hour's time when I've got a completed environment and I've put these cliffs everywhere and that's the stage I want you to get to as well. So I will see you in a sec. And I'm back. I've now finished putting the cliffs all around the level just as I've asked you to do. I'll show you quickly what we're going for before we move on. So you can see that all the way around, I have now put these cliff edges. I've overlapped them, I've resized them, I've put them at different heights. I've done all manner of different things just to cover up the landscape that was there. And that goes all the way around. But I don't want you to fret about making it look perfect. If you look up at the top here, nothing really matches up because the player can't see that. If you look over here, I've got just something completely hanging out of the map. Again, the player can't get there, so it really doesn't matter. All that matters is how it looks to the player. And if I press play and have a little run around, it looks exactly as it should. And that's what we're going for at this stage. There is one thing though that we need to look at, which we'll do in the next step. And that is any areas where I've left the landscape poking through and I've just left a piece here. I could have covered it up, but I wanted to show you this. You can see that the colors don't match up very well. So just here, and it's really noticeable. So in the next step, we'll look at how you can change the color of textures with an Unreal Engine. And we'll do that just to get it to match up a little bit better. It'll still stand out, but to a lesser degree. So that's what we'll do in the next step, assuming you've got the rest of your landscape complete. So I will see you there. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.